welcome back at the border session. Two days of uh, interviews from uh, The Hague. Um, Gaia Vince is my uh, guest. Hi. Hi, how is it going? Yeah, how is it going? It's going very well, thank you. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's the sum total of my Dutch now. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> we have, to move, all, to, we have to move to English now yeah, for me. Okay. Uh, your your uh, talk was called Adventures in the uh, Anthropocene. That's the title of your uh, the book you wrote. Um, first, what is the Anthropocene? Well, it's, it means the age of humans. So you'll have heard of the Jurassic and the Cretaceous when yeah. dinosaurs ruled yeah. the earth and the Cambrian, which was a huge explosion of life. Well, the Anthropocene means the age of humans. And it's this idea that we have so changed our planet in all these different ways that we're moving into a new geological epoch. And um, uh, in your book, you uh, go and find people that, that, that make the change or are, 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 are well we're all making the change yeah. all of us but um, in my book I, it, it's really um, the accumulation of a two and a half year journey around the world around more than 40 countries that I visited to see how people are, ch are coping with this enormous planetary change that we're causing so you know you you know about climate change and global warming but we're also causing you know um, the sixth greatest extinction since life began on earth and you know we're, we're moving um, we're moving rivers we're damming them we're, we're we're logging forests we're creating farmland and cities these are entirely artificial landscapes you yeah. know so we're really dramatically changing our planet and Really, my journey was about seeing the people living at the forefront of these changes. You know, how are they coping? How are they surviving? And do they have any lessons for, that we might all learn from? Yeah. You know? And can you give me a, 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 a examples of lessons you've learned from those people? Well, I mean, everywhere I went, I met really remarkable people living in their communities changing things either socially or environmentally for the better. So humans always change their environment. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, we really need to change our environment with wisdom. You know, we need to change it to make it better rather than just um, changing it as a byproduct of what we're doing. So, for example, um, one of the problems that we're facing at the moment is the melting, the disappearance of glaciers. Mm -hmm. And glaciers are these huge freshwater reservoirs that provide us with free water. Yeah. And when they disappear, you know, um, that means rivers are risked, irrigation for agriculture, people don't have enough drinking water and they all move to um, the slums on the outskirts of these big cities like Mumbai or Delhi or wherever. Well, I met somebody, um, a retired railway worker living in the Himalayas, who has this problem, you know, in these villages in this place called Ladakh, in the north of India, on the border of India, Pakistan and China. And what he is doing is something quite incredible. He is creating artificial glaciers. So, well, it's amazing. Um, it never rains there, hardly ever rains. It's a high altitude desert. But what he's doing is um, he is carving a depression in the landscape in the shadow of the mountains where he is channeling water from glaciers much much higher up and then he he allows the water to slow down and settle in these depressions they form glaciers in the winter time and when the sun gets high enough to cast its heat on the artificial glacier that forms it melts at just the right time for the sowing season for when the crops need to sow um, the seeds so um, it's really transformed lives there people are moving back yeah. and because of global warming it's actually having some positive effects so now that they have the water from these artificial glaciers global warming means they're not just planting one crop of barley a year they're also able to plant tomatoes fruit trees wheat yeah. many other harvests a year so at the moment things are looking really good for them of course, as global warming continues, even those artificial glaciers will not become viable. But, you know, at least it gives them time to adapt to the changes yeah. that we're creating. So, so traveling around the world, you said more than 40 countries you've, you've uh, visited. So um, after this, this, this trip, we, uh, did you come back more or less optimistic? Uh, <laughs> I am an optimist. Yeah, that's, you what, know. that's what you sound like. That's, that's, I am an optimist. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're facing some enormous challenges. Our species has never faced these, so many challenges like this before. And it's, 
you know, since we evolved. Yeah. So um, I don't know how we're going to get through it, but I, I think I'm confident that we will because I am optimistic. I mean, obviously this is before Brexit, so that changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if you, um, um, uh, so, so how did you um, uh, start your travel, doing the 40 countries? What were your, say, say did you already know what you were uh, go, who you were going to visit in the next country? Or did you go to a country and then? No, so, so no. I, I mean, I, I, so I started off, I quit my job um, and rented out my, um, my home. Yeah. And I bought a one-way ticket to Kathmandu in Nepal yeah. and thought, I'll see if I can make this work for six months. And then, you know, I flew there, found some stories, wrote about them, moved to the next place, got talking to people in bars, in cafes, NGOs, institutes, wherever. And slowly, slowly, more stories, more interesting things. Rented my place out for longer. Yeah. Kept prolonging the journey after two years is enough. Moved back two and a half years later. Yeah. Moved back to London. And now and you're, bo you're now you're bored because you're because, because you're in London. <laughs> right now I'm in the Hague. So yeah. <laughs> but that's always a difficult thing yes. isn't it, for, tra for traveling travelers that you never can settle down any, uh, yeah. anymore. Yeah. So you it's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a completely different mindset being being in one place. It yeah. takes took me a while to to kind of grow back into London again, to grow back into the sort of mundane lifestyle, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, so, so, you, you, um, uh, so you, you, you portray your travel, you portray people, uh, the people you, you, you've met, but so, so um, is, is there so, so sort of one, um, uh, 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 in Dutch we say rode draad, a red, so it's a sort of a one theme, yeah. a is, is, is a what, what, uh, yeah, it sounds a bit like, like rhododendron, we have a flower, yeah, the rhododendron, the, yeah, yeah, we have that as well, oh, the it's a one particular the rhododendron is that you like, yeah. no, the, the purple is one I yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what would you, so what is the theme you decided to uh, to write about, because of course if you do this, this travel like this, you can choose a lot of them. Yeah, so, so the Anthropocene, it's yeah. adventures in the Anthropocene, it's, it's this idea that we have changed the planet in every single way and what is it like? What is this new world like? Everything has changed. The environment that we are used to, the, the planet Earth that we evolved into is different, very different now. But what at, is that at like? At the same time, are, are, have humans changed, the, the people living on the planet, have they changed as well? We have to change what we do and how we do it, yeah. Because the things, you know, we're now a, a population of more than 7 billion, resources are limited, the climate is unstable, it's unpredictable, you can't expect the monsoon to come when you were used to, it could just last two days the monsoon or it could cause terrible flooding, it might just never arrive at all, you know, um, we have to change the way we do everything for this new planet um, and, you know, things are changing too slowly for that really. And what does it mean for you, you personally? What we we as a, as a species have to change? What what does, does yeah. it mean in your in, in well, your everyday life? It means it means you know how we plan. You know when you, for example, I'm moving house at the moment. I'm trying to find a new house. I'm very careful not to fight, buy a house too low down or too near a river because, yeah. you know, with all the precautions we have in place, I know that the climate is changing from. Britain used to be, you know, drizzle and um, basically a very, very stable, not very, not very sunny, not very extreme climate. But we are moving into an extreme climate. I don't want to move to a, what could be a flood zone soon. Yeah. You know, we're now getting much more, much more tropical weather systems moving even to higher latitudes right. in London. You know, we, we're getting almost monsoonal type weather. We're getting extreme heat waves and then we're getting extreme flooding occurring. You know, we've seen the yeah. Paris floods recently. I mean, this is these we're different... In, yeah, we're, in prob we're in trouble here. In, well, in you shouldn't even exist. You yeah. shouldn't even exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the Netherlands is a really interesting case because the Netherlands is one of the very few places around the planet that has been preparing for this <laughs> yeah. for, well, hundreds of years. Yeah. The rest of the world needs to catch up, needs to think about the mindset of yeah, the Netherlands absolutely. where we think in advance of 50 years, we think about the 200 year flood, we think about, you know, other countries need to catch up now, you know, and the Netherlands has some really interesting ideas which the other countries need to adopt, like sort of um, the idea of sacrificial land, you know, that this land 
is 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 allowed to is allowed to be flooded you know we're not going to do everything to protect it it's allowed to be yeah. flooded to protect inward lands mm -hmm. yeah. this whole idea is very very new to yeah. places like the united yeah. states yeah. to to britain even you know that's people try and build on that land and then they want insurance for it and they want the government and the army to step in with sandbags if it gets flooded this idea that no this is to be sacrificed for a flood is yeah. is is very new you know and it shouldn't be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay yeah okay thank you very much yeah it's a pleasure um, yeah uh, thank you for watching now uh, we'll be doing uh, more interviews later and if uh, you're watching on demand you know that uh, all the interviews will be on our YouTube channel later thank you